Hi folks and welcome to Shook Happens. In today's episode, I want to share with you the deer blind that I recently built. I dubbed it the rut hut. I've always wanted a smaller blind that I can move around the property from season to season using the Kubota and the forks. This isn't a how-to video. There's, there's no plans on it. I'm not going step by step on how I build it. I just filmed the progress of this as I went along. And I think this took, oh, probably, I started this maybe three or four months ago. Now, I don't have three or four months of work wrapped into this, just an hour here and an hour there. I could probably have built this in one weekend if I wanted to, I'm sure. But anyway, I thought I'd share to open up ideas for yourself. If you're looking at building a deer blind, you might like this. If nothing more than some ideas, maybe a little bit of entertainment. So in wrapping this rut hut, this cedar rut hut, the outside of this is going to be wrapped with cedar poles or cedar offcuts. This is what it looks like in its raw stage. I got these at a buddy's sawmill that I help run occasionally. And when they mill up utility poles, these cedar poles, these are what they have left. And what I'm going to do is get these milled down to four and a half feet by five and a half inches wide. As you can see, they're kind of in all shapes and sizes. And some of these are 12, 13 feet long. But we're going to get these knocked down, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. The first step in this is I have my chop saw set up. It's open here that I can pretty much accommodate any length of those boards. But ultimately what I want is four and a half feet. So all I did was down here, I set up a stop lock to match four and a half feet for my first cut. And hopefully most of these are long enough that I can just slide them down, do another cut, and hopefully get two boards, cedar boards, at four and a half feet in length. That's going to be the first step. Now all of these cedar boards, even at four and a half feet in length, they're going to have a taper to them. And I need to remove that taper. So I have a sled here that I'm going to straighten up one edge of these to get a true edge on the table saw. And I'll run that through, and once I get one side ran through all of these boards, I'll remove the sled, I'll set the fence at five and a half inches, flip the board over, and then get them all the same width. So that's going to be the next step in this process. So we're at the floor stage right now, and with the current state of lumber prices, I certainly wasn't going to go to the store and buy this lumber. I was going to use what I had. Years ago, five or six years ago, I got a deal on some 4x6 treated lumber posts. So that's going to be the base, and then on top of that, I'm going to use some honey locusts that we milled down trees for my property. They're at a one inch thickness. I'm not going to run them through the planer. I'm not going to even even them up. I'm just going to do four by four to make the base and in the next segment here we'll get the walls up. And one other quick thing I should point out. I did add a third skid underneath in the center. I just got to thinking in a four foot span eventually even though these are rough sawn, true one inch honey locust boards, it's going to sag, especially with me sitting on it. So I did add that. The next time you'll see me, I should have this thing framed up. And we'll go to the next step. Right now I'm in the process of cutting some 2x4s to get this thing walled up. 
Now I'm not gonna bore you with a bunch of that footage. It's just simple framing. I'm gonna put three two by fours on each side and we'll get back to the video once this thing is framed up. The only reason that I wanted to stop right here and talk is I was originally gonna have these walls at five feet on the outside and then a peak at about six and a half, seven foot. I can't do that and here's why. When I made the cedar door for the steer blind a couple months ago, I made it six foot tall. And I'm not gonna cut anything off and redo this. I'm simply gonna jump the walls up to six feet and run to a seven, seven and a half foot peak. I thought I'd take a quick break here and show you where I'm at. Obviously I got everything framed and got the purling beams in. And I'm just now cutting uh, the rafters, getting those notched. And I'll put probably, I don't know, a set of three or four of these down there. Now keep in mind, I'm not a professional carpenter by any stretch of the means. I'm simply putting this video together in case you want to build your own deer blind. I'm sure you have some basic building skills. And that's all this really requires. And each blind is going to be unique to each individual. I just thought I'd have you come along while I was building one of these. I did use cedar on these exposed posts here simply because I'm going to wrap the rest of this in cedar. It's going to be the rut hut, the cedar rut hut. Now for the, for the roofing, I had recently put an addition, a lean-to on the barn and had some leftover roofing in tin, corrugated metal. That's all I'm going to use for the roof. So, we'll see you in a little bit. The roof's on now. Again, this was just scrap metal that I had left over from a lean-to addition on the barn. It was red and then I found a cap that was brown. I had a couple cans of Rust-Oleum, brown, dark brown Rust-Oleum. Two cans and I spray painted the whole roof and a little bit of the underside and the ends here. So let's get to the next step. The next step will be sheeting this entire four foot by four foot blind with all these cedar offcuts that I trimmed down earlier this year. These are four and a half feet long and close to six inches wide. And I wanted a three inch overhang on each side just to give it that uh, log cabin chinked look or whatever it's called. So. This is gonna look pretty cool for a deer blind once I get this wrapped. Another thing I'd like to mention is as I'm wrapping this with these cedar rounds, I am putting tar paper on this. That'll help keep the wind down on the inside and it'll darken it up on the inside. A little bit ago I finished putting up the last couple pieces of cedar to get this wrapped and install the door that I had made quite a few months ago. Got the hinges on and the handle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna tack some trim on the inside of this, make it proud a couple inches, just so when this closes, it's got a tight seal and it closes all the gaps all the way around. And I still need to come up with a latch system for the outside in the inside and I got another handle to put on in here but it's getting close now I'm not sure how long this video is gonna run I don't even know if you made it this far into it I got a few more things that I need to do just kind of tweaking it I want to put some indoor and outdoor carpet on here for a rest for the crossbow or shotgun for noise reduction get some hooks in there maybe put a rubber mat on the floor but this is just about ready to go. And this was a fun build, and I love the looks of it. So anyway, thanks for joining me here today at Schick Happens. 
And if you have built one of these or this inspired you to build one, leave a comment down below. I'd like to hear about it. Until next time, cheers.